Okay, so objectives for this um, lesson is so overview of financial management. You are going to discuss the career opportunities, the issues of the new millennium, forms of businesses, goals of the corporation, and lastly is the agency relationships. So what are the career opportunities in finance? Okay, so <clears throat> now a lot of you may be uh, wondering why like discuss mental finance or financial management when in fact we are accounting. Okay? We're taking accounting course. So actually um, finance is our brother. Okay, so finance is our brother in the sense nga sila ang magsunod sa atong output. Okay? Si Pasabotana. The job of an accountant starts sa pag-identify sa transactions, sa pag-journalize, posting, adjusting, uh, preparation of trial balance, and then uh, leading to financial statements. Okay? So, si accounting is more on the preparation of financial statements. However, si finance, kung financial statements ang atong end product, ang atong output, sa finance is mo na ilang start. Okay? So, they will be the ones uh, who are going to analyze the financial statements and assess the performance of the organization. And then suggest or, re or recommend something para ma-improve ang ilang performance or ilang financial condition. So in short, the end output of accounting is financial statements, but for finance people, it is the start. So since uh, our knowledge in gathering data and in preparing financial statements is necessary for finance, it is, ne uh, it is a must that accounting graduates must also know the concepts of finance okay? so that we would know kung unsa ang data nga kailangan nila. Okay? So what data does the managers need? Does the manager need, rather? Or sa mga investors, unsa kailangan nila nga information? Okay? So, or government, VIR and other government agencies who will need to read the financial statements. So since we already have the background in accounting, we already have an advantage. Okay, so we can actually pursue in the finance industry. Okay, so in finance, there are three branches. So you have the money and capital markets. So when we talk about money and capital markets, this pertains to stocks and pertains to other uh, financial instruments or financial investments. So example of mga money markets, so you have the treasury bills, treasury bonds, commercial papers, negotiable certificates of deposit. Okay, so you have capital markets, so part popular ana is ang stock. Okay, so stock market. So actually we can become a broker or a stock broker kung mo, uh, mo, uh, if we already took an exam okay so ang sec or securities and exchange commission always conduct an examination para may mong broker so actually pers uh, personally i am a, uh, i have a sideline so if you have read my profile so i'm also connected with sun life so I'm also selling. Okay, so I'm also a licensed broker for mutual funds. Okay, so nana siya na belong sa money and capital markets. So you can pursue becoming a broker as long as you are equipped with knowledge in both accounting, finance, and some uh, business laws. Second, um, investments. So you can become... Or you can recommend investments for the company. 
So pwede tungod sa imong knowledge in finance, you can request or you can recommend to the management kung asa dapat ibutang ang kwarta. Okay, so ibutang ba niya ni sa time deposit, ibutang ba niya ni sa money markets, or ibutang ba niya sa capital markets. Or perhaps uh, before spending something on a project, so especially big projects. So for example, mag-purchase o sakyanan ang company or mag-build na sila of store. Okay, so or any any project that involves a lot of money. So before na approve sa management, it must undergo a series of analysis. So our knowledge in finance could help management decide which investments ang dapat tato utangan or atong investan. And last branch is the financial management. So from the word itself, so managing finances of the company. So when and how, when to disburse, what are the conditions in disbursing the money, how to protect the money, where to put the money. And of course, um, let us not forget that we are managing our finances to achieve the goals of the company. So those are the three branches. Now, if you want to pursue one of these branches, you must be equipped with the knowledge in financial management. So responsibility of a financial staff. So the, the responsibility is to maximize the stock value. So we say maximize the stock value, pataaso ni mo ang stock price. Okay, so pataaso ni mo ang stock price sa company. So kumbaga pamahalo ni mo. So ano sa man mo mahal ang stock price or value sa company. Okay, so of course, if maayo pagka-manage ang company, there's a big potential na mo grow or mo expand. Okay, so we can help the management maximize the stock value through the following methods. Forecasting and planning. So you're going to forecast financial statements. Second, investment and financing decision, helping the management where to invest and where to source our finance. Mag-loan ba ka? Mag-issue ba share Or we'll just use the retained earnings or the profit. Coordination and control. So because uh, one of the of, uh, one of the job of the financial staff staff is to create budgets. And budget is actually a financial plan and control. So yeah, makita na to sa budget if we're doing good. Next, uh, transactions in the financial markets. And then lastly is managing risk. So role of finance in a typical business organization. So as you can see in the diagram, so the highest um, position or the highest governing body in an organization particularly in a corporation, is the board of directors. And then the board of directors will assign one of them to become the president. And then the president will hire, for example, in this case, uh, three, three types or three vice presidents. So one is in charge in sales, one is in charge in finance, and then one for the operations. Under the Vice President for Finance, so you can see there are uh, two positions, the Treasurer and the Controller. So, si Treasurer ang in charge sa pag-manage or custody of assets. So, siya ang magkuan, siya ang mag-receive sa cash, siya po ang mag-disburse or mag-keep sa cash. So, under the Treasurer, you have the Credit Manager, Inventory Manager and the Capital Budgeting Director. So, kanong na-appeal ba si Inventory Manager? 
Okay, so, <clears throat> so appeal to inventory manager because if the inventory is not managed well, so for example, na outdan na, na outdan nag inventory, tapos walay cash, what will the treasurer do? So, si treasurer pwede siya manawag sa supplier to ask for a credit or to loan. So, si capital budgeting director is in charge of deciding which big projects to invest. So, in short, si treasurer is more on the safeguarding or protection of cash while controller is more on recording. So, dari tanan. So, dapat separate si treasurer o si controller. Dilit na siya pwede. Ay kung mag-uban ang recording o ang custody of assets, a fraud or a possible fraud can arise. So, munang gibuha si treasurer o si controller. So, si controller is more on recording. So, cost accounting, how to accumulate cost, financial accounting, then you have the tax department. So, more on filing of taxes. So, financial management issues of the new millennium. So, first is the effect of the changing technology. Second is the globalization of business. So, the effect of changing technology, as we know, so the uh, financial in management is now, I can now be done with the use of the technology. So, you can already pay now through online or without the uh, physical transfer of cash from one person to another. Second is the globalization of business. So the financial management is now broader because dili lang national lang imong manage or the company that is operating locally but you also need to see the effect impact of the globalization So remember kung magtukod kag laing business o business agawas you have to put, take into consideration a lot of issues for example in each country Nasa different niya mga tax system or tax laws that you need to comply. They also have uh, um, different rules sa mga ilang business taxes, sa pagbayad sa income tax. So all of this must be considered. So next is the percentage of revenue and net income from overseas operations for 10 well-known corporations. So this is uh, on year 2001. So the table only shows that these companies are from US, but if you see the percentage, mas dako ang ilang revenue from overseas. So 60%, 69%. So most of the revenues are from abroad, okay, so from non-US countries. Okay, so now we are going to discuss the alternative forms of business organization. So I think you are familiar with this, okay, na discuss na ni sa partnership and corporation accounting. So, of course, the first is the sole proprietorship. So sole proprietorship, it only involves one person or isa lang ang tag sa business. Partnership, owners are two or more. However, si pa, uh, ang pinakadaghan ani nga owner is the corporation and the most complex one is creating a corporation. Sole proprietorships and partnerships. So comparing sole proprietorship and partnership so the advantage of the soul, it is easy to form. Second, it is only subject to few regulations. And lastly, you are not going to pay 
corporate income tax. Because in a sole proprietorship, ang imong income, if you have salary outside of your business, so ang imong salary o ang imong income sa business will be combined. Disadvantages of sole proprietorship, first, it is difficult to raise capital. Okay, so it's difficult to raise capital kay ikaw raman isa. So unlike if dagan ang tagiya, so dagan ang sources of funding. Second, unlimited liability. So in case nga magkalos, so si individual sole owner, so sole proprietor, will need to invest additional cash from his own personal money. Last is limited life. So the life of the business depends on the life of the sole proprietor. So kung wala na si sole proprietor, maapil sa ang business. Corporation. So advantages ni corporation um, over the other two forms of organization. First, it has an unlimited life. So, kay dili man mag-agad ang iyang life sa owners, muna siya nga, you can see, um, maski dugay na ang corporation, na agihapon siya, maski wala na ang original niya tag iya, it's because it is easy to have a succession sa corporation. So, the life of the corporation does not depend on the life of its original owners. Second, uh, it is easy to transfer ownership. So, kung ibaligyan niyo mo shares, you do not need to ask from the original owners para ibaligyan na siya. It can be transferred easily to one from one person to another. Third is limited liability. So, when you say limited liability, kung ma-bankrupt si corporation, so, when you say bankrupt, wala na'y asset, wala na'y cash na makabayad si corporation. You cannot force the original owners, maski billionaires pa sila, even if you have the knowledge nga dagan sila kwarta, or you have the knowledge nga kaya nila bayran, you cannot force them because corporation is a separate entity, a legal entity different from its incorporators or its owners. Lastly is ease of raising capital. Okay, so ease of raising capital because mas dagana ang tao nga pwede mag-invest. Okay, so anyone, even if you do not know them, as long as they have the money to buy shares, so they can raise capital. However, the disadvantages of having a corporation is first, it is uh, it is always subjected to double taxation. So, ano mo double taxation man? So, you are taxed as a corporation. So, ang income sa corporation, it tax. Tapos, whatever dividends you will receive. So, di ba, ang, in, ang dividends na to, manggagikan man sa, sa income. So, pag receive ni mo sa imong dividends, so you will also be taxed for that income. Second is cost of setup and report filing. So mas regulated si corporation. So siempre si corporation dagan kayo siya a file, a reports, and you need to undergo a process for documentary requirements to submit kay sec to be granted a corporation niya, status. Okay, so next, uh, financial goals of the corporation. The primary financial goal is to maximize the shareholder, uh, shareholder's wealth, or we call that the shareholder wealth maximization. So take note sa corporation, ang tag-iya ang tag -iya sa corporation are the shareholders. So your goal as a financial manager is to increase the value of the share price or the stock price for so that the shareholders will increase their value. 
So for example, ang shareholder nagpalit og gis pesos nga stocks kada isa. Of course, nagpalit siya ana with the hope nga later on it will turn into 100 pesos per share or 50 pesos per share. So unsa na siya para mag-increase? So para mag-increase ang stock price, first dapat there's a growth plan. Okay, so Kaniba nga company is uh, nabay potential nga modako or mag-expand. Taas bag profit okay, So, maayo ba ang iyang reputation sa community? So, there are a lot of factors uh, why the stock price will increase. But most probably, it's because of the um, financial decisions of the manager with the help of course with the of the financial staff or the financial managers so questions do firms have any responsibilities to society at large so remember the corporation is not operating in isolation they must always engage with the society so dili baka makaharm sa society Naka-benefit ba ang society sa imo? Second, is stock price maximization good or bad for society? Will increasing the stock price ba maayos sa society or bad? And lastly, should firms behave ethically? Labay impact if ang firm will behave ethically as against those firms who do not Behave as one. Okay, so questions. Is stock price maximization the same as profit maximization? Same ra ba ang stock price maximization o ang profit maximization? Okay, so the answer is no. So despite a generally high correlation among the stock price, EPS, and cash flow, profit maximization is not the same as stock price maximization. Okay, so remember that profits can be manipulated. Okay, so it can be manipulated, dili siya long term. So for example, ang manager is nag-apas lang sa bonus, and then ang bonus niya naka-depende sa profit, so, there could be a problem kay pwede niya i-manipulate ang records so that mutaas ang profit and then matagan siya bonus. Pero, di ara iyang panlang tao. Stock price maximization is long term. Okay, so, the value of the stock price reflects not only the current performance of the organization but also its growth or the long-term plan sa organization. So if there's a long-term plan, for example, mag-expand, mag-produce of another product, nga profitable, okay, or mag-expand abroad, so this could be indication that the stock price will increase. So as financial managers, our goal is stock price maximization and not profit maximization. The current stock price relies upon current earnings as well as future earnings and cash flow. So, ang current stock price does not only rely only sa current ni mga earnings or current na profit, but also your possible or your future earnings and future cash flow. Some actions may cause an increase in earnings yet cause the stock price to decrease. So some actions daw may, may cause an er increase in earnings or stock price to decrease. So example of an action niya mag-increase ang earning. So for example, uh, this company nakadaog sa bidding sa government. So siya ang isa sa mag-build o infra. Let us say this company is in charge to build a road or bridge for a bridge. 
Tapos kani nga bridge uh, for them to kunay para na income perhaps they will charge a toll fee for every passenger or I mean for every car nga mulabay ana. So it may cause an increase in earnings. So example of an event or action nga uh, would decrease ang stock price. So I think the recent action nga uh, akong mahatag sa inyo is the case of ABS-CBN. Okay, so ABS-CBN, of course, they have managed their finance as well. However, because their franchise is now expired. So maski on sa pakamaayo nila o manage nilang finances, since they don't have the authority to operate anymore, so their earnings, their stock price decreases. Okay, so another topic is uh, agency relationships. So, remember that corporation is a separate entity from its owners. However, we have to take note that a corporation cannot move by itself, maski inatawag na siya or gitanaw siya sa balaot niya laing tao, but the corporation does not have a head they don't have hands, they don't have feet. So, for the corporation to exist, it needs the agents. Okay, so it needs ng niya tao to work for the, or to move for the corporation. So that is why the incorporators are tasked to become agents in behalf of the corporation. So an agency relationship exists whenever a principal hires an agent to act on their behalf. So a corporation can hire a president, a CEO, and other officers on his behalf or on its behalf. So agency relationship can exist between shareholders and manager. So in a corporation, ang pinakataas yung rango are the shareholders. Remember, they are the owners. However, it is very impractical that tanan shareholders want to the principal place of business para magmanage the business. So instead, they are delegating their uh, management. They are delegating their managing control to the managers. So therefore, the managers are agents for the shareholders. The shareholders and creditors, so, so especially if uh, mag-loan ang corporation, there are cases nga the creditors uh, will participate in the management of the corporation. So again, uh, there's an agency. So, but it's now between the shareholders and the creditors. Okay, so shareholders versus managers. Managers are naturally inclined to act in their own best interests. Okay, so kung mag-hire kang manager, dili sila ang tag-iya, natural ragyod na siya nga, unahon nila ilang own interest over the interest of the corporation. So how to mitigate, okay, so how to um, shape the managers to act on behalf of the shareholders. So sa ni mo nga, hat, paghatag o control para ang managers will act on behalf of the shareholders and not its own interest. So first, you have to fix the managerial compensation plans. So, matong gingon, gain nga dapat, if you are going to award the performance of the managers, it should not be based only on profits. But it should be based kung itaas ba ang share price or perhaps hataga ni mo og shares ang managers para mas direct yun ang or maon yun niya ang responsibility nga. Kailangan niya magtarong so that mo increase ang stock price para pagmudas na ko ang iyang value, stock value. Second, um, internal uh, control is direct inter intervention by shareholders. 
So, ang shareholders dapat dili siya passive lang. Okay? So, dapat na siya active involvement in the management of the shareholders. Of course, with the help of the board of directors. So, there should be an oversight function. Third is the threat of firing. So, if you can see in a, in, sa, la, sa dagan niya mga movies, maski owner pa ka, maski ikaw pa ang founder, there will always be a threat of firing. So, pwede ka mapahawa sa imong kaugalingon niya, company. If you do not um, function or you do not manage according to their expectations. And lastly is the threat of takeover. So, we say take over, so there's a scheme na pwede na isa ka tao or group of people who will buy a lot of shares so that they will have a big control. So, for example, sa so sige nilag palit og shares, na mo ng 51% ang ilang ownership. So, remember sa stocks or sa corporation, ang pinakadako og say sa pagmanage is those people na dako o shares or dako o control. So, they can take over the management. Shareholders versus creditors. Okay, so, shareholders through the managers could take actions to maximize the stock price that are detrimental to creditors. Okay, so, they have to take, uh, to increase the stock price para ang mga creditors mabayran. In the long run, such actions uh, will raise the cost of debt. So, cost of debt refers to the interest and ultimately lower the stock price. So, you have to balance maximizing the stock price at the same time having enough cash to pay the creditors. Okay, so next, what are the factors that affect the stock price? First, projected cash flow to shareholders. So we say projected, so these are future forecasts for the cash flows. So kung pataas or pa-increase ang cash flow, the stock price will increase. And then kung paubos ang cash flow, perhaps it will decrease. Second is the timing of the cash flow stream. So, di ba, in the accrual basis of accounting, pwede mo taas imong profit. Pwede siya mo taas ang profit, but possibly sad niya, wala po yung cash. Okay, so, perhaps, mas daga ng accounts receivable. Pero gabay ra na mayan. So, dili lang dapat income ang tanawon, but also the movement of cash. Second is the riskiness of the cash flows. So, regular bagyon na mag-receive sila o cash. Or na possibility na dili sila makapabayran or mapay in cash. So, this is the basic valuation model, but I don't want you to be uh, to worry. Okay? Madiscuss pa siya in the uh, succeeding topics. But to give you the idea, what is this? So, CF stands for cash flow. So, cash flow for the first year, cash flow for the second year, and so on. So, basically, you are going to calculate the present value of all cash flows. Okay, but I will not dwell so much on that. Okay, we discuss pa na in the succeeding topics. So, factors that affect the level of and riskiness of cash flows. So, so diba in a statement of cash flows, there are three. There are three, uh, it is divided into three activities. You have the operating, investing, and then financing. 
So sa operating, it is the result of how the operation managers or how the managers manage its operations. So nag-increase ba ang income? Second activity is the investing decision. So nabutang ba na ang kwarta sa sakto nga? Or the investment bang atong gi gi investan really brought cash to the business. Naka bring in ba siyang more cash or basin more cash payment or outflow. Financing decisions or so the relative use of debt financing. So remember we have a lot of sources. Pwede ka sa banko bang utang. Pwede ka sa mag issue ka share price. I mean stocks. So financing is where to source your money. Asa ka magkuha o kwarta. Okay, there are times nga dili enough ang cash generated by the operations. That is why you need to get cash from others. Next, uh, dividend policy decisions. When is the right time to pay dividends or to distribute dividends? Okay, so dili pwede nga arbitrary lang nga mag-decide ang company nga, sige, mag-issue mag tag dividends, tapos one na day kwarta. Okay, last is the external environment. So, kading first are all operi uh, internal. Second, external environment is something na dili kontrolado sa company or its own financial managers. So, a big, a big example of that is the COVID-19. So, kung sabay nagdahom, di ba? Na ang, ang kadagalan sa business nagsara, maski, okay. But with the, a lot of businesses nagsara, it's because kailangan siya not to spread the virus. But because of, also of that, a lot of businesses nagsara. So, that's an example of an external environment niya pwede maka-apekto sa imong cash inflow. Okay, so I'm done with the presentation. I want you to ask questions or any clarifications. Okay, questions? Okay, so naabat to na slides sa Neo. So actually, the PowerPoint, ako na to siyang i-upload. Okay, ako na na-upload ang Neo. I mean, ang kanina PowerPoint. However, aside from that, I am also recording this Google Meet. So for your reference... So I will also send you the link. 